Soon to be sworn in Prime Minister Narendra Modi broke the unwritten code and invited fellow heads of state of neighboring countries for his swearing in. But this move to enhance his foreign relations seems to have courted displeasure from many parties in the political spectrum. Take a look. NDA divided even before swearing in. This is the big question doing the rounds following the controversy over Modi's invitation to Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapakshe to attend his swearing in on the 26th. In a bold diplomatic move, invitations have been sent to leaders of all seven SARC countries, including Rajapakshe, despite the allegations of war crimes levelled against him. NDA allies lock horns with BJP. Yes, allies of the BJP, especially from Tamil Nadu, have expressed their dissatisfaction over the invitation to Rajapakshe. The move seems to have triggered resentment among its allies in Tamil Nadu. MDMK chief Vaiko, a BJP ally, condemned the decision to invite President Rajapakshe. Vaiko pointed out that the reason for Congress's decimation in the recent elections in Tamil Nadu was due to several anti-Tamil measures, including the support of the Lankan army in the ethnic war. BJP's PM to be Narendra Modi, who led his party to an emphatic win in the Lok Sabha polls, had reached out to Sri Lankan President Rajapakshe in a bid to boost the relationship with the neighboring country. Rajapakshe, too, had accepted Modi's invitation and confirmed his presence. Good friend Jaya, too, unhappy over invitation, may skip the swearing in. MDMK, a pre-poll ally of the BJP, is not the only Tamil Nadu-based party which is unhappy. AIA DMK Supremo Jaya Lalita, who is known to be a friend of Narendra Modi, is also reportedly dejected by the move. Jaya Lalita and Modi had exchanged pleasantries following the record win of the BJP. Jaya, who had also attended Modi's oath-taking as the chief minister, might just skip the latter's big day. Sources from AIA DMK said that the Tamil Nadu chief minister was unhappy over the decision to invite Rajapaksha and made a pew to senior leader to take part in the ceremony. DMK joins the dissent chorus. Karnanidhi led DMK too has been disappointed by Modi's move. With a strong anti-Rajapaksha feeling in the minds of Tamils, DMK leader Elan Govan said that Modi could have avoided the invitation. The Prime Minister should also understand the feelings of the people of Tamil Nadu that when the Tamils in the island are attacked and uh, uh, human rights violations are occurring and most of the countries of the world have criticized such activities and the people of Tamil Nadu are charged with anger, uh, he should, could have avoided uh, For the first time he is becoming the Prime Minister and he should have the wishes of the people of the all parts of India. He further opined that inviting Rajapakshe is not the only way they can have a cordial relationship with Sri Lanka. We always have diplomatic relations. We always have uh, uh, representatives here. We are part of the UN and they are also part of the UN. It doesn't mean that if somebody comes with the uh, Prime Minister's oath taking ceremony alone, uh, we can develop uh, uh, diplomatic relations is uh, something not acceptable. Claiming brownie points for the UPA's stance on the Sri Lankan issue, Tamil Nadu Congress President Nyana Desikin trained his guns on the regional parties. We can't antagonize the neighboring countries and at the same time you can't insist, solve all these problems. Both are contradictory. Some Tamil parties here, they want, they want to treat the Sri Lankan government as an enemy government. At the same time they want the Indian government to solve the Tamil problem. It's not possible. It's a contradictory, it's a political. This government also must take forward what all the previous government did to solve the Tamil problem there. At the national level, the Congress party in the meanwhile said that Modi, who is all set to become the Prime Minister, will have to tackle the Sri Lankan issue. And they are the ones who are Tamil Pure movement. And they are the ones who are in Sri Lanka. Now what is their reaction? Look, now the new government is coming. और प्रधानमंत्री बनेंगे मोदी जी उनको देखना होगा कि वो इन सब कंट्राडिक्शंस को किस तरह पार पाते हैं किस तरह उसको डील करते हैं एनसीपी लीडर माजिद मेमन टुक द ऑपरेशनिटी टू क्रिटिसाइज द एनडीए पॉइंटिंग आउट दैट देर इज अ रिफ्ट इन द वेरी बिगिनिंग मेमन ओपाइन दैट द मूव इज नॉट इन द बेस्ट इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द कंट्री
I would say that if there is a controversy uh, right at the inception, at the threshold, you know, well before even the Prime Minister is sworn in, then it is not a good omen for the uh, combination. If they were at all to be invited, it should, care should have been taken to ensure that there is not even a whisper from any quarter with regard to such invitation. If it happens, it's not in the interest of the country. BJP goes on the defence. While trouble seems to be brewing within and outside the NDA fold, the BJP, which heads the alliance, has gone into a defensive mode. BJP spokesperson Nirmala Sitharaman said that the decision to invite Rajapakshe was well thought and that they are ready to justify their move to the revolting allies. This invitation to the heads of governments of the SARC countries is a very uh, considered and a very responsible gesture. And therefore to read much more, which are absolutely not tenuous arguments, I would say, is not called for at this stage. There are concerns being expressed by our own allies. I'm sure um, we can express the reasons why this invitation has been sent to not just one or the other, but to all Sark countries. Modi's very first step before the swearing-in seems to be facing hurdles from both his allies and foes. Rajapaksha's attendance in Modi's swearing-in ceremony will certainly cut no ice for the people of Tamil Nadu. It now remains to be seen how Modi gets himself out of this mess. A News 9 report. Now in what comes as a clever move, B.S. Yedurapa, the former chief minister of Karnataka, has written a letter to Narendra Modi urging him to give him a chance to serve the party in the state. And what makes this move grab eyeballs is how Yeddi is trying to reclaim lost ground in the state. Here's a report. Just days after Narendra Modi addressed NDA allies at the Central Hall of Parliament that also included BJP MPs from the state, B.S. Yedurapa has written a letter to Modi, besieging him for an opportunity to strengthen the party in the state. Dear Narendra Modi ji, Namaskar. I am writing this letter with great sense of responsibility and humility subsequent to our interaction at Gujarat Bhavan as well as after listening to your speech at Parliament Central Hall during the occasion of you being elected as BJP party's parliamentary leader on 20th of this month. I recollect the summary of our interaction during our personal meeting along with the other BJP leaders of Karnataka at Gujarat Bhavan on 18th of this month wherein you pleased to express that party's victory is mainly due to the wholehearted support of public at large including those of new voters, SEST, OBC, youth, etc. You further expressed that since the expectations and aspirations are too high across the country, at least few capable leaders must come forward to take the responsibility and work towards strengthening the party in their respective states. As you expressed in general, I voluntarily and wholeheartedly offer my willingness to work towards strengthening the party in Karnataka. I congratulate once again on your immense success and look forward to see you as successful Prime Minister of our country for many more years to come. With best regards, B.S. Yedurappa. Meanwhile, Shobha Karandlaji, who conducted a victory lap today in a constituency of Udupi Chikmagalur constituency, supported Yedurappa. ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ <laughs> But political pundits feel that there is more than meets the eye here. This move appears to be a very calculated move in that BSY is looking to regain lost ground in the state. With also saying that the chances of BSY getting a ministerial berth being sleek in the Modi cabinet seems like BSY is playing a new game. In the scenario of BSY heading the party in the state, he might parlay for a seat for Shoba, considered to be close to him. And if this happens, another Wakaliga leader, D.V. Sadananda Gauda's fight for a ministerial birth also grows strong. Vinay Gangoli for News 9.